Welcome back to the Lapeef Network. Um, I was saying basically, because I already said it again, but I was saying basically, welcome back to the network. I am Amira. I am joined with this very special woman. Her name is Crimson Cure. Now I'm going to have to address her a little bit differently because she's Muslim and because of our culture or the culture that she most likely shares with me, we speak differently towards each other. And the way we address each other is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Crimson Cure. <laughs> wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, sweetie? It is such an honor to have you here. I know you have your own platform. Uh, I have watched a few of your videos. And before we begin anything, I want this video and the stream to be centered around the unconscious and conscious mind of women and the things that we do that just do not make sense. <laughs> so I know you speak a lot about that on your channel. But before we get to the questions that I have here, I would like you to say, who you are and what do you stand for? What made you open your channel and why are you so fiery? Okay, so for those of you who are unaware, my channel is The Crimson Cure. My name is Kendra um, and I started my channel in 2018 just because it was an outlet. I came to what's known as the Manosphere because I was attracted to the conversation of the brothers, their insights, the things that they were going through. And it resonated with me because, you know, I have black men in my family, my brothers, my father, and so on. And I watched their struggles and it was similar. I watched them go through a lot of the things that the men were talking about. And so it intrigued me to want to speak on those things that were happening in our community, but from a woman's perspective instead. And so I began my channel like that. It was really laid back. I, at first, I didn't have any um, consideration about growing the channel or anything. I just wanted to a platform to speak. Uh, and then people began to sort of gravitate to it and like, oh, OK, this is a a lady speaking this way. So, you know, what, you know, this is interesting. And so the fieriness actually comes from the passion of what I'm speaking about. Because when we speak in terms of culture, specifically black culture in America, uh, black people have a lot of issues, some of which we recognize and others which we sort of turn a blind eye to. And so for those things that we have a tendency to maybe turn a blind eye to or, you know, speak, minimize its influence or its impact, I actually speak about those things. And so that's where the fieriness actually comes from. Well, you have yeah. a good reason to be what you are. I mean, this makes sense. If I completely understand where you're coming from. And I, like I said, I've watched a few of your videos and I just sit there like, <laughs> <laughs> so, right. So I guess we can begin. Are you ready? Sure. All right. So my first question to you. Um, so I guess we can start off a little bit regarding you personally and me personally, if you want you feel free. Um, so I wanted to ask you, because you're a Muslim, do you face any challenges being a Muslim woman and uh, being from your culture, from being a Black American woman and being Muslim and all of the rules that we have to follow? How do you take on the challenges of dealing with the strict Islamic rules? Well, at first it was really challenging. I took Shahada, I was 18. It was 1996 when I took shot and it was actually really challenging because my family was my biggest pushback. Um, they did not like it because I was raised Christian. Oh, oh. So we were, we were, I was raised in the church and everything, singing in the choir, the whole nine yards, all of it. And so, you know, my mother was a, her father was the pastor. My, so my grandfather was the pastor of the church that we went to school. I mean, we, we went to when I was a child. So we grew up in that entire environment. So uh, when I came home and was like, 
yeah, I took Shahada. <laughs> I'm not Christian anymore. Uh -oh. My was like, excuse me, you did what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I've been contemplating this for years, and so yeah, I'm Muslim now. And so they didn't really take that news very well. Um, I imagine not. What what made you do this? Well, it kind of started when I was 13 years old. Um, I had a lot of spiritual leaning just because we had grown up in the church. And so spirituality or talks of spirituality was not foreign to me. So I began to actually read the Bible. Now we grew up with the King James version of the Bible. A lot of folk know we talking about a lot of black households. We had the King James version of the Bible. So that's what I grew up in. And, and if you're familiar with it, it uh, has a lot of Shakespearean almost language in it. So once I became a little bit adept at it from school and them teaching that type of language and how to read it, I actually began to read the Bible. I probably read the Bible cover to cover probably about a good three times. And it started me on a spiritual journey. By the time I got through reading the Bible a couple of times, I wasn't Christian anymore. I, I, now I hadn't converted to Islam, but I was like, okay, I don't believe in the Trinity because I didn't see it in the Bible. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I began to sort of ask questions to, you know, like the elders in the church about specifically the Trinity, which was my point of contention. It was the thing that I couldn't get over with logic. Hmm. And because they never could give me a, a logical answer that was to my understanding, I said, well, let me start studying other things. So I went along, kind of long story short, I sort of did a little bit of dabbling and study with other Eastern religions, you know, and spiritual ideologies. And I came around and I actually had, a, um, I was not too partial to Islam. So Islam was actually the last stop on my spiritual journey. Mm. I, I held it off. I was like, okay, I don't want to know nothing about them. But I said, okay, if you're really on a spiritual journey, you have to look into everything. So mm. I did. I, um, when I was in, I got to college, I went to UIC. And so I started going to the different bookstores and they had a Quran in English. I said, well, let me pick it up. Let me see. Let me read it. Not so sure. I got it and I began to read it and I'm like, oh, 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 mm -hmm. oh okay, oh, well, okay. Yes. And, so, and so I said, you know what, this might be for me because it was logical, it was clear, yes. I understood it, it made sense to me and it spoke to me, it resonated with me on a very deep level.